everybody, and welcome to ScreenFlow Live. My name is Andrew Haley. I'm the product evangelist here at Telstream for ScreenFlow and Wirecast. We're sorry today's broadcast was a little delayed. Uh, that's mostly my fault. I was, um, we, we've had a busy day here. In case you hadn't heard, we just launched Wirecast 7, and uh, it's been quite a busy day for that. So um, that meant that uh, we were a little late getting going here. So I apologize for that, but we're here now, and we are planning to move forward with today's topic, which is all about audio. What I want to do is spend a little time to show you some of the features in um, ScreenFlow 6 and what is new around that, specifically re with regards to audio. So there's some changes that we've made, some new features that we've added, and I think you're going to like them a lot, especially if you've been hankering for something that can handle aud multi-channel audio. So that's pretty exciting. I think that um, we can dive right in. It's kind of an informal topic today. We're gonna, I'm just going to show you a few things, and then I can stay and take questions. Uh, and we can talk more about any of the features you want, whether it's related to audio or anything else. So please feel free to um, leave a comment. We can throw those on the screen, and I can look at those and take them as we get them. Uh, and I can also stick around a little bit um, to answer questions as well. So, um, and in case you missed it last week, we didn't have a broadcast. Uh, this, we had took a week off, it was vacation time. So we are getting back into the swing of things. We should be here regularly Wednesdays at 2.30 p.m. Pacific time. All right, well, with that, I'd like to jump in and maybe show you some of what we've got going on in ScreenFlow 6 uh, with audio. So let's talk about some of the features that you can see there. So I'm going to switch over to my desktop here, and I'm going to bring in ScreenFlow 6. I'm going to pop it up here. And what we're going to do is pull up the main user interface. You can see here this is uh, just the opening welcome window. Uh, you should all be familiar with this. Let me zoom in so you can get a better view of that. And uh, what you're seeing here is you know, pretty much standard stuff. If you are familiar with ScreenFlow, you've used it before, these should be very common panes or, or um, areas of the product for you. Uh, so what you're going to do here is if you have a multi-channel audio device, um, it would appear on this checkbox here. So any of your built-in uh, both digital and um, virtual audio devices should show up here and you should get up to 16 channels of audio from uh, you know, compatible devices. So if your USB mixer or USB um, audio interface, or if you have um, a more professional card that goes into your computer, then you can pull directly from those as long as they have associated Apple drivers that work with Apple system software. So we work with um, the native AV Foundation drivers, and we should be able to see most of those um, types of devices and see up to 16 channels of audio coming in from them. Now today, I don't have a 16 channel audio mixer just sitting around. The one we're using uh, for this microphone and for this audio broadcast is actually an analog mixer. So it could only ever send um, like a stereo mix, you know, one channel or two, uh, depending on what type of card we had. So that's not what can really help you. But uh, if you do plug it in, you will see, you should see, just like you see these two stereo tracks coming from my built-in system microphone, you should see uh, the entire, all up to 16 channels or however many active channels the device is announcing to your computer. Uh, so if you don't see that and you've selected the correct device, then there may be an issue. You may want to reboot, retry, and make sure um, it's working. Please contact us if you do have one that you think should work and it isn't showing up there for some reason. But that's where you'll see it. You'll see all those individual devices. Uh, this is great for musicians. It's great for people doing interviews, people with multiple microphones. You can run all of these different audio inputs into a device like this and then have them all simultaneously recorded onto different tracks, even to different channels in ScreenFlow. So it's a really handy uh, new feature and one that wasn't there before but was frequently requested by a lot of ScreenFlow customers. Um, so what I do want to show you, though, I do have the ability is another audio feature that I've mentioned before, but I want to talk about here as well, which is the iPhone preview audio. This is something you also couldn't do in previous versions of ScreenFlow. So ScreenFlow 5, we introduced the idea of iOS capture, plugging in your iPhone, iPad, iOS device, and then capturing the screen directly in there. One of the things that that didn't do, though, was it didn't give you a way to listen to the audio from the device while it was being recorded. Uh, that was just not added into that version. And so um, a lot of people who need to hear the sound cues coming from the device will ask for an ability to hear the audio or monitor it during the recording process. Let me show you how that works. So what we're going to do is we need to 
launch the ScreenFlow um, recording monitor. So we're going to show the recording monitor here. I'm going to pop that up. And that's going to pop up this extra window, which is really like a, um, a buddy window to anyone who's doing recording. I don't recommend using this window if you are only have one screen on your computer. You don't have multiple displays hooked up. Uh, and you are recording something on the screen that you want to use in your broadcast or in your final video. And uh, I mean, it is possible with our new, you know, uh, with our new partial screen capture, you could in theory just record part of the screen that you need and then keep the recording monitor out of the recorded area. So that's totally doable. But in general, um, unless you're planning to record a very specific part of your monitor and not the whole screen, then you'll probably want to tuck this on a second monitor. And I have a second monitor hooked in, hooked in here um, to this computer. So it's really easy for me to park it off this desktop area on my second screen, which is just here on um, my left. So that is where I would monitor all of my audio and, and so forth. The other cool thing about this is that it allows you to see, um, it does more than one thing. It's a multifunctional window and one that a lot of, I think, Again, you may not be as aware of because it's something that we added in uh, ScreenFlow 5 and we've continued to modify as it's since it, ever since it made it in. But one of the neat things that it also does is it can record video uh, or you can monitor video from your, um, your cameras. So if we, for example, turn on our video camera and we turn on our FaceTime camera here, then that should pop in and you would be able to see your camera. I'm gonna switch to my FaceTime camera here. You should be able to see your FaceTime camera in the monitor screen while you're recording. So again, it's really handy because if you are using video and recording video during your broadcast, then that would um, be something you might want to see if you're off frame. Maybe you need to scoot a little bit more and center yourself. Maybe you need to readjust the camera. All of that is stuff that you can keep an eye on while you are recording if you have a second screen or if you're just recording part of your screen. So. That's another handy feature about the recording monitor. You'll also notice this marker button, which allows you to, while you're recording, mark good parts of your take. You can say, ooh, I nailed that one. I can mark that. And then all that can pop up in your ScreenFlow timeline once you've completed the recording. Uh, and so lots of handy little things. But the thing that I'm focusing on today with audio is this iPhone volume preview monitor. So I actually have an app currently active. Uh, this is a new, um, uh, it's a new iPhone game that's actually kind of uh, really fun and, and has been uh, getting pretty popular. You might have heard of it already. It's called Pinchworm. And it's a really fun little, um, just kind of similar to uh, Flappy Bird or something like that, where you just need to control this little worm to jump over obstacles or dive underneath them. And uh, it's really well designed. It's very cute and has a nice little soundtrack and it's got audio associated with it. So I'm going to try turning up the audio, and hopefully um, this will make it out of my computer through the sp audio splitter and then to you through our microphones. You should be able to hear it as I turn up the volume. So I'm just going to adjust this preview volume, and we should be able to switch over here. If I mix from the iPhone here and adjust the preview, and make sure that we've got the game playing. OK, so maybe, actually, hold on. I need to turn on the volume. There we go. So my iPhone was switched off. That's another thing to be aware. If your iPhone is muted manually on the machine, or on the, on the device, then it's going to just appear muted to you. And you're going to think, what's going on? I have all everything's plugged in. Well, ScreenFlow and Apple and the, your computer will respect the audio settings that you've uh, set on your phone. So they can't override the phone's volume settings. So that's it. Pretty much adjust the volume, and you should be able to hear it. Uh, and now, if you're playing, which, why don't I just hit record so you can kind of see how this game works real fast. I talked about it. Might as well record it real fast. Um, so I'm going to pull this in. I'm going to turn up the volume here while I'm recording. I'm just recording my iPhone at this point. We're going to hit record. And then uh, we'll just do a quick, uh, I forget how to play this. I'm so bad. There we go. And so I'm just going to do a couple obstacles here. And you'll see the music actually speeds up 
as you uh, as you do better. So I'm just gonna stop it there and we'll stop recording so you can see what I'm talking about here. So I, I died there in case you didn't hear that. I'm gonna turn down the volume here, turn that off. And now I, I can open the ScreenFlow document and you can see there's the game in all its glory. I'm gonna turn off scrubbing so that's not annoying for you guys as I scrub through the clip. And there you go, we'll play it real back, back real fast for you. So there you go, you can see uh, I uh, actually made it over a few obstacles before I stopped recording here, but um, or stopped playing. But that is the audio that I was listening to while playing the game through the audio monitor, um, you know, the iOS audio monitor feature in the um, recording monitor window. So big mouthful there, but basically you've got this a really cool ability to monitor anything that you're doing on your iOS device while playing, operating it, and uh, that helps you make better recordings in ScreenFlow that you can then use for your projects. So uh, why don't we stop right there? If you guys have any questions about that, I'm happy to take them. Let me pop into Facebook real fast. And pull up the live screen here. There we go. Okay. Pull those in. All right, Bryce, cool. What's on the agenda? Okay, so no questions at the moment, looks like, or at least that's what I'm getting. So it's not a big deal, we can move on. And if you are just joining us today, we are just covering some of the new audio features in ScreenFlow 6. One of the things we just talked about was the iOS audio monitoring uh, and the ability to listen to iOS devices while recording, uh, which again, just makes you more in control and allows you to make better videos uh, and operate your recording, you know, your iOS devices uh, better while you're making recordings. A lot of applications, games, um, and others really depend on sound. And so if you can't hear that sound while making recordings, it can be a little tricky. So uh, we've solved that problem by going through the iOS, um, through the recording monitor, which you can find here. And you should be able to adjust any uh, video or audio settings that you need there. So I'm gonna save this project uh, just to the desktop. And then um, let's talk about uh, multi-channel audio tracks, audio devices. So I'm gonna start by opening a new document. And then what I'd like to do is add some media here. So I'm just gonna add as if we had recorded a track or a, um, a clip or something with a multi-channel audio device. In this case, I'm gonna use this uh, Big Buck Bunny uh, QuickTime movie, which is an open source video that has multiple channels of audio associated with it. So we'll pull that into our ScreenFlow project. I'm gonna turn off the scrub live audio again for this. And then we'll just kind of scroll through here. You can see we've got, um, it's rendering the audio waveforms as it goes along. We can actually um, zoom out so we see the whole clip. See the audio, we've got some big spikes in the middle, lots of sound there. This is not really a heavily scored video. It's got some music um, and I think it has some sound effects, but that's about it. It's not really dialogue heavy or anything. and um, it's pretty light, but what it does have is actually has a multi-channel um, audio track. So it's got uh, 5.1 surround sound, so you can see it's got six tracks there. And so the way you access our multi-channel audio device, after you've recorded from your multi-channel device, um, if you're bringing in multiple channels of audio, or if you already have a clip that has multiple tracks, then you are going to... Uh, you, you wanna click on it just like any other clip in ScreenFlow and then load it up in the audio inspector tab where you can then see uh, any of the audio related stuff. So you've got the overall mix here, 
by default, this area here, the audio mix where all the channels and so forth are, are um, laid out is minimized. You just need to expand it to see all of your mixer options. And then uh, you basically can play through as we will do here. I'm gonna play this clip. You can play through and see where the audio is appearing. So this is mixed down to a stereo track and actually nothing is happening on tracks three through six or channels three through six. So it's, it's mixed down to stereo in this case. This might be because it was originally a 5.1 in the other file version. Uh, this is an MP4 that might have mixed it down to stereo. But uh, regardless, you should be able to mix each one if you had each one and then change them accordingly. So if you need to say, and I'm going to turn down the volume just a tad because it is a little loud. Here we got our evil squirrels. I'm going to actually pull this in right here. And Big Buck Bunny will go to a nicer part of the, the screen here, uh, the, the movie. So he's smelling flowers. He's doing fun stuff. He's kind of waking up here. And uh, what we want to do is if, let's say we need to lower one of the tracks. Easy to do. You can lower them independently. If you need to solo one, and I'll click here. If you need a solo one, you can click the solo button and listen to just that track. Okay, so that easily flips through each one. And then you've also got the ability to adjust the overall volume and levels of it. And you have the ability to pan each track or each channel. So I could do a um, pan one to the right, pan one to the left, and so forth, if one is really meant to be on one or the other. So you've got a lot of control over that, as well as um, uh, seeing each one. The other cool thing about ScreenFlow 6 is that it allows you to extract any channels. So if there's a bunch of junk channels that you really don't need, uh, you could extract those, or you, if there's one that particularly you want to focus on or need to pull out or isolate from the others, really easy to do. So what you can do is you can extract any of the channels associated with a clip, by just right clicking on it. So that is how you would pull out um, each individual. So you have up to 16 tracks, you'd pull out each one that you wanted to isolate onto its own. Um, in the original, what you'll probably want to do is either delete the original, so you can actually extract that audio, oh, sorry, detach that, and that'll pop, you know, separate the audio and video. And at that point, if you're just working with one track or just with two, and we can again det um, extract, say, channel two to its own, now you've got channels one and two isolated on their own tracks. And then you really you can either just mute or get rid of the original, depending on what, how, um, how necessary it is. And then you can work with just the other ones. So I hope that makes sense um, in the way it works. Now, one thing you'll notice is with ScreenFlow, um, when you extract an audio channel, you should, in theory, still have access to all the multiple channels. But what the extraction process does is it automatically mutes all the other tracks except for the channel that you extracted. So you're not going to lose information here. It's non-destructive. But what it is going to do is conveniently make it easy for you to isolate the single channel. So you're not having to manually uh, do that for all 16. You just extract them all and then all of them will be isolated with the other channels muted, um, and just the one that you've extracted or want to focus on will be at full volume. And then you can focus on, you can add effects and filters and all that to it. So that is how um, the extraction process works in conjunction with the multi-channel um, level setter and mixer. Another neat thing that I recommend if you haven't gotten much into in ScreenFlow is, and this is not necessarily new, but it's still incredibly valuable and useful as ever, is the, you know, all of the processing. So I highly recommend using your smooth audio levels, volume levels, that will keep things more even uh, and less spikes, you know, if there's problems or suddenly somebody gets really loud on their microphone and the rest of the time they're a different volume, you, this will smooth it all out. Uh, 
Other things to know about are um, your ducking, which is a really handy feature, particularly if you um, if you have other tracks of audio um, or dialogue going over music and so forth. So ducking I've talked about in the past, but um, this is a really easy way. Let's say if you record an audio uh, track on top and you want to narrate something, uh, all you need to do is turn on ducking for the other tracks and they will lower their volume uh, immediately to a lower setting so that you um, don't have to do that manually and then you can hear the voice coming over the audio or the video. Uh, it's really handy when working with music in addition to narrate, narrative clips or um, narration or voiceover. Other areas of this panel that I would highly recommend you spend some time exploring are the filters, which can give you effects like presence. It can make your audio sound like you're in a large room or a large hall. So we could throw this on, say, uh, this clip here. Maybe what we'll do is we'll delete this one. We'll throw the presence clip on here. And let's make it, uh, let's make it appear as if it's in a large chamber. This can be a fun effect. particularly with vocal narration and things like that, you're going to notice a very echoey. So when he, when he ate that apple right there, um, particularly with maybe less so with music, but more so with, with um, solo effects, either words or sound effects, you're going to notice more echoes. So if you heard that, it sounded like it was in a large echoey chamber. Uh, and then, of course, you can go as far as like a small room, like he's just right next to you, or eating the apple. Much closer, sounded like it was like right up next to your ear, or right up next to the microphone. So these effects can be great, especially if you've got somebody who's a distance from the microphone or they're too close to the microphone, you can give them some distance from it uh, just by using these effect filters. You can also adjust the amount, so uh, you'll get a lot more. You know, if you do like a fifty percent mix versus a uh, you know hundred percent, you're going to get a bigger difference. So, highly recommend you play around with those. Uh, in fact, why don't we just do that? We'll do the uh, cathedral, and let's turn that up to hundred percent, just just for fun. <laughs> so then you get a really long echo with that. So I hope uh, that's all audible to you as we are playing around with this audio because it's very important that you hear the things that I'm talking about. If you can't, please leave a comment. All right, so that's kind of it for the effect panel. I'd also like to talk about this remove background noise. I find this one almost, I use this one and the uh, ducking and the audio processing, the smooth volume levels, those are the three I use the most often by far almost always use them in every single ScreenFlow video. Um, I don't use too much remove background noise. I really listen carefully and kind of fine tune it. I find myself typically between 30 and 50% uh, because otherwise it makes the voice or my voice sound too um, robotic and it's, it's losing too much of the, uh, the waveforms on my voice. So keep that in mind. These things are, you know, if you're up at 100%, I don't think, that's ever going to work for anybody. You need to use them with a, a soft touch, but they can really help enhance the clarity and the quality of your video and remove some of that white noise in the background. Every recording, all audio equipment always has some sort of hiss or noise floor. Uh, if you dig down far enough and listen, turn your volume up high enough, you'll always hear it. So this can get rid of some of that, particularly in noisy rooms. Uh, this room that we're in right now, most of the equipment we have is actually very close to the microphone, uh, there's fans and computers and things like that, and so that can make for a noisy room, uh, even just right now on a broadcast like this. So having a filter like remove background noise can be super useful when uh, processing your audio and really improve the quality of your audio uh, and your videos in general. All right, the final thing is your audio filters. Now, I'm not gonna be too much help to you here because 
Uh, these are generic Apple filters that uh, Apple has provided and kind of as part of their operating system that ScreenFlow can call on. And there's bandpass filters and dynamics processors. And you can just go down that whole list. And I, I can't really tell you too much about each one because I was never uh, you know, trained as an audio expert. So when I see terms like dry, wet, delay time, feedback, low pass cutoff currency, uh, frequency, that, that is, uh, doesn't mean much to me. So, uh, I've tried, I play around with them from time to time. And if you really know what you're doing, I think these instantly make sense to an audio, uh, technician, but they don't make it sense to me. And I find that more often than not, the way this works is you just add them and you play around with them. And eventually by getting a feel for the settings and the sliders, you'll figure out when or when not to use them. Uh, and in general, uh, you know, that's that's the, all I can say about this. We, of course, are going to be adding more easy to use, easy processing filters. So you will just have simple clicks and effects and things you can add and maybe a single slider and take a lot of the work out of that processing for you. So you can get 80% of the bang for, you know, 20% of the effort. Uh, but if you really want to dive in and get super professional with your audio, then these filters are here for you. And, you know, we make that available because it's you know, it's right there um, and why not? Because the professionals out there who know what they're doing can really make use of this. But for your average consumer, uh, for if you don't know what this means either, you know, uh, feel free to play around with it and experiment. I encourage everyone to do that. That's how we all learn. But I can't really help you at this moment um, with each particular filter because I'm just, I'm not that deep in my knowledge of audio processing. So that is uh, kind of all I wanted to cover today as far as all about audio and what you can do in ScreenFlow. Uh, please, let's take a moment. If you have any questions, I can take those now. Um, otherwise, we can call it a day and we'll see you next week. Let's see if we've got some comments. Oh, it looks like some feedback from Ibrahima. Uh, that's awesome. I'm glad that you uh, we were able to show you the recording monitor. The recording monitor is super useful and I use it a lot. Again, I highly recommend it if you have a second monitor you just keep it on uh, if you're particularly if you need to monitor your iOS device or your um, market recordings or keep an eye on how your recording's going. Again, it's one of those hidden windows that you might not know about because it's it's right here, but it's um, it's it's not going to pop up automatically because it's not useful automatically to everyone. All right, well. I think that's it. If any of you else have a quick question or comment, please leave that. Uh, you can always tweet at us using the hashtag uh, ScreenFlow Live, and we will get those and be able to share those. And in the meantime, keep screen flowing, and we'll see you next week, uh, Wednesday, 2.30, and um, we'll be on time. Take care.